This Junction is a ball-bustingly difficult stealth game with great ideas, greater atmosphere, but way too many design flaws to overlook. Here's why. This Junction is a top-down indie stealth game where you play as three different characters whose journeys all intersect as they stumble upon a big corporate conspiracy. You navigate through corridor after corridor using three active skills and one passive skill to bypass or neutralize guards in your way, and you have both non-lethal melee attacks or slightly more lethal gunplay. Everything has a mostly strong feel to it, but if you're playing with a control like I always do, I'd strongly recommend remapping the melee attack and control settings. You're gonna find yourself whacking guys and bots over the head again and again, and that shit gets real exhausting real fast if you're hitting a trigger button and not a face button. Missions follow a singular gameplay loop. Locate key cards and navigate a two-story compound. On the first floor, there's always a side mission of locating an upgrade kit. And on the second floor, you have to secure an item of interest in the deepest parts of any level. It's really linear, but levels usually offer multiple routes to an area of interest. So if one path is really giving you grief, you can try an alternative path and see how that fares. These missions eventually lead into a villain confrontation in the form of a dialogue tree. Here you get to pick and choose which information you want out of any bad guy, and these sequences always end the exact same way. Let go, arrest, or kill, all of which presumably affects the ending somehow. So if you're hoping for anything resembling a boss fight in this game, you'll be sorely disappointed, or maybe you won't given what this game throws at you. More on that later. This junction feels like a cross between Hotline Miami and Metal Gear Solid, specifically Ghost Babble in the first two Metal Gear MSX games. It's a stealth game where you gotta use gadgets to strategically dispatch your enemies, and you're punished with brutal death but instant respawns when you screw up. And as a bonus, the world and atmosphere feels like the pixelated love child of Deus Ex and Blade Runner. This game is more faithful to arcade-style stealth than Metal Gear ever was. With MGS, you tend to break up the sneaking around with boss fights, puzzles, set pieces, and a whole lot of talking. But with this junction, from start to finish, it's just you navigating corridor after corridor. And true to arcade-style fashion, the difficulty ramps up with each passing level. You see a larger variety of enemy types and obstacles occupying each corridor, all with different weapons, higher resilience, and in the case of bots, a trickier line of sight which makes sneaking behind them harder than regular guards. The hardest enemies even self-destruct when you take them down, necessitating that you run away after neutralizing them to avoid taking damage. The Hotline Miami comparison comes from the fact that you really need to master timing and strategy to get through each corridor. You either need to time your movements just right to avoid enemy line of sight, or wait for the right moment to use one of your skills to disorient multiple enemies at once and take them all out in rapid succession. And like Hotline Miami, so much of this comes from the age-old rule of die, die, and die some more. You'll become very acquainted with the patrol patterns and corridors you need to get through because you'll be dying through them again and again and again and again. That's because even with maxed out health, you have the durability of a goddamn Pringle chip. To the game's credit, it really does force you to get strategic with each and every corridor you encounter. You can't just bum rush from room to room to room, no, you really have to be careful and smart about how you get from A to B. And pulling it off successfully is just so deeply gratifying. Unfortunately, that comes with a wee bit of an asterisk. See, you'll notice I haven't really been referring to this game as a stealth action game, despite being marketed as a stealth action RPG, more on the RPG element later. That's because the action part of stealth action refers to your ability to fight your way out of hairy situations when caught. Well, contrary to what the marketing of this game would have you believe, no. You don't really have that option here. This is a stealth game through and through. Make one mistake and you're dead as Limbaugh. The enemy AI in this game isn't exactly smart, but the instant you're detected, they aggressively bum-rush you and start shooting. They just move too fast for the player to outrun, and in the heat of battle, especially with twin shooter controls, it's very difficult to know what cover spots are actually cover spots and which ones aren't. You can defend yourself in a few instances if you're lucky, but in most cases, it's counterintuitive. Assuming you even survive, you're likely to lose a lot of health and probably exhaust a lot of energy that you'll need to get through the rest of the level. This game's advertisement really plays up the create your own build and play your way tagline, but that's really not true. You can't really get creative with corridors this difficult. The game demands that you play it a very, very specific way because if you don't, you literally won't be able to beat it. I know that because I hit a snag with one level that almost made me quit playing the game outright since without energy to use abilities, I literally couldn't get through the level. I had to restart it completely so I could enter the second floor with energy and get through the part that was giving me grief. Now the game did force me to get good as some assholes might say. I'd gotten my ass kicked so many times that I was executing some really impressive maneuvers that felt really gratifying to pull off. Problem is, this junction often rendered most of that hard work moot with its shit checkpoint system. See, the game follows a growing trend in gaming in that there's no autosave. Instead, every floor has one checkpoint area, and the only other checkpoints come when you go up to the next floor. You see this in games like Dark Souls or my personal favorite, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. But in that game, not only were checkpoints spread out after every few rooms to keep the game from digging you around too much, but they also refueled your health and energy. More importantly, you can use those rooms to save more than once. Well, not only do the save points not replenish your health and energy, but you can only use them the one time. 
meaning if you find a checkpoint area, you have to decide if you want to play it safe and save now, or if you want to chance it and get more done so you won't have to constantly keep redoing the same shit each time you inevitably die. Imagine that, a game that forces you to be conservative about saving or not. I could forgive the ball-busting difficulty of this game if the system was at least fair and gave you the wiggle room needed to experiment or take chances, but this is a whole new kind of dicking about that nearly ruins the entire goddamn video game. You can get through a whole slew of rooms, secure key cards, and pull off a flurry of impressive, badass stunts using minimal energy, but screw up once and die? Go fuck yourself. Try again. That is neither fun nor good game design. That is a flagrant disregard for the player's time and effort, and it only builds resentment and infuriation. Now, I know that sort of thing is common in this bullshit era of everything has to be fucking goddamn Dark Souls. But if I'm gonna spend a few hours playing a video game, I'd rather spend those few hours experiencing as much of that video game as I can. Not replaying one fucking sequence over and over, and having about as much fun as I would snapping a rubber band against my nuts. Now, it's important to bear in mind this game was created by three people. Three developers managed to make a very large, ambitious, and genuinely impressive video game that kept me drawn enough to see it through after spending 22 hours suffering through its campaign. But therein lies the problem. I suffered through it. I stopped enjoying myself after a while. In fact, to go back to an earlier point, this was the first game I played in years that I almost just quit playing outright. And that was around the time the third playable character was introduced, Spider. See, functionally, our three playable characters, Frank, Joe, and Spider, are nearly identical. It's mainly in the skills and lethal weapon where they differ the most. Frank's skills were by far the best in the game, because they're the most useful. He's the only one who can heal himself, he can fire a stun dart from afar to freeze any enemy in place, and his smoke grenade spreads across a larger playing field. Minus Joe's concussion grenade, his skills are pretty much useless, since they serve to augment his combat which, if you get caught, won't really save you. But of the three, he can at least take the most damage. It was always Spider's levels I dreaded the most, and her intro perfectly captured why. First of all, her Uzi is fucking useless. It takes half a damn clip to put a single person down. One of her skills is the equivalent of a porn mag in Metal Gear, only the magazine didn't vanish four seconds after you placed it. And while she has about as much health as Frank, her corridors always seem to have more enemies than either of the others starting out. And this game doesn't have that moment where you're temporarily invulnerable after taking damage like, say, MGS1. Once you take a hit, you're gonna take 7 billion more and be dead in a second. Oh, and the kicker is that level I'm talking about doesn't even have a fucking goddamn checkpoint on the second floor, which is also massive to boot. So the game is asking you to cover large stretches of land full of really tricky corridors and demanding you not to fuck up once because if you do, you get to do it all over again. This isn't a short stretch of gameplay either. Even when I finally got past it, the successful run still took well over 10 minutes. Now imagine replaying that one segment of gameplay a good few dozen times, spread across a few days, then see how much fun you have after that. But again, I want to reiterate that this game was created by three people, and it really doesn't feel like it was made by three people. It's a full and complete experience, and I do admire the dedication they put into making this game. That and frustrations aside, there's this real sense of satisfaction, strategically scoping out each room, and getting a sense of how you want to approach it. It's almost certainly going to take a few tries, some a few dozen, but you will eventually get through it, and pulling off successful infiltrations really is gratifying when you're not pissed off. The other big part of this is that the more I upgraded my characters, the more eager I was to finish and get going on some sort of New Game Plus mode. I wanted to see how the game fared with the buffers of higher energy, more likely energy drops, stronger abilities, faster sneaking speeds, all that good stuff. And what happened after I finally beat the campaign? Your save file only allows you to continue to the very last scene before the credits rolled, and if you try starting a new game, it warns you that all your goddamn progress will be deleted. So the very reason to replay the game and experiment now that you're fully upgraded goes out the fucking goddamn window. The only way to replay the game is to undo everything that made the game easier to get through and suffer again and again and again and again. Which goes back to an earlier point, the RPG element. See, there's an upgrade skill system in this game. Finding upgrade kits in each level provides you with optional boosts to your character, and in each level you earn XP to spend on secondary, more useful upgrades, namely anything that gives you more energy or more frequent energy drops. There's no builds you can make with this game. There are skills that have very clear and immediate worth that you'll want to get immediately, and everything else is kind of bullshit. But without any way to continue after you finally beat the game, none of it matters. Some skills and boosts very clearly hold more worth than others, and the game as a whole is just too demanding to let you experiment with other boost kits. It's not like you can pick and choose which of the three characters you play as, or choose different skills. There's only one laser-focused right way to play the game, and it's too damn hard to be fun after a while. Even if you're playing for the challenge, there's no real reward incentive. 
The gameplay never evolves beyond that first hour. There's nothing to build towards because it's all in service of the same brick wall of a gameplay loop. I've often said that it's better to do one thing really, really well than try to do a bunch of things half-assed. Problem is, this junction doesn't really do the one thing it sets out to do all that well. For example, remember how I said to remap your controls at the start? Well, that's because to knock out stronger guards, you have to whack them a good three or four times in rapid succession to actually knock them out. And the instant you hit them once, they're programmed to go on the attack, but can't if you keep hitting them. Meaning if you don't hit the melee button fast enough, or if the hit doesn't register, they'll get a hit in. I didn't die because I miscalculated when I struck. I died because I got the drop on the bad guy, but my inputs weren't responding accurately. So what you're left with is a singular gameplay loop that doesn't let you efficiently do what good stealth action games do, adapt when situations go south. You can only play it as a stealth game, and a very, very linear one at that. This is a game that demands absolute perfection from the player, whilst being ripe with imperfections that make that impossible. And it's so frustrating because I can see the kind of game that Ape Tribe Games wanted to make. I can see that strategic stealth action idea and want so desperately to see it flourish. I wanted very badly to love this game because the feel of it is rock solid. The effort that it had to take to create a game like this with a limited three-person team is damn near Herculean in and of itself. And the fucking soundtrack, my god. If there is one, and I do mean one, silver lining to getting my ass kicked by this game over and over, it's the music accompanying each and every level I suffered through. Every single track in this game sets a mood to each level perfectly and keeps you hooked. This is hands down the single best indie video game soundtrack I've heard since Fury and Undertale. I mean, just listen to this shit, man. Seriously, if you buy this game, get the bundle with the soundtrack because the soundtrack may well be the only part you'll want to come back to. And the sound design is really, really good. From the audio cues, the ambiance, the machinery, and especially the weapons. But that ultimately circles back to the overarching issue here. This Junction's a game I want to like and want very, very badly to have incentive to replay, but I don't. Too much of it feels one note, right down to the structurally and visually similar levels, all with the exact same guards roaming around. Its design flaws make the game just way too frustrating for me to want to subject myself to more of it more than once. And the lack of any sort of New Game Plus just kind of seals the deal outright. It's not even like the game has anything in between all the frustrating levels to spice things up. Things like boss fights or secrets worth a damn. It's a one and done experience, but one that left me way too frustrated to walk away feeling satisfied the way other single playthrough games have made me feel. Which means all that's left is to talk about the story. And let's just jump right into that without any funny interludes because this game's writing is as straight faced as a Lincoln log. The premise of Disjunction's not-too-distant future of 2048 is that there's this dangerous drug hitting the streets called Shard, and it's causing conflicts to arise among various gangs throughout the city. But beneath the gang wars, an insidious plot from an unknown entity to escalate that war for their own personal gain. And it falls on a private eye named Frank, an ex-soldier named Joe, and a hacker with gang ties named Spider to uncover the plot that all three are unwittingly connected to. This Junction Junction hits all the dystopian noir tropes and runs with them. There's nothing really original to its plot or any of its characters, but it's very good at building intrigue. Each mission steadily leaves you and the characters asking more and more questions, all while trying to see how all of the smaller plot points paint a broader picture. The writers behind this game really put in the work to do some damn good world building. Like any good old fashioned conspiracy, you have a lot of twists and turns and everything being some part of a much larger evil grand tapestry. It's all very neat and complex without feeling convoluted, and it makes the dystopian future feel real and lived in, which isn't an easy thing to pull off. There's just one itty bitty problem with the writing in this game. For as tight and clean as everything is, and for as well told and well realized as the plot may be, I do not care. And the reason I don't care is because I'm not invested in anyone or their journeys. Everything about this game is too business to make me feel invested. Characters are often just talking about the plot or their backstories. There's seldom room to really let any of them flex their personalities enough to make us actually like any of these characters. Especially since the lead three are all characters you've seen time and time again. Even the branching dialogue trees often boil down to seeking information as opposed to actually engaging with characters. Joe's daughter was killed before the events of the game, for example. We get a few scenes of him talking about his daughter and how their relationship fell apart, but everything else is just what did you learn from the place you infiltrated? 
Frank's an ex-cop turned private eye, and for the life of me, I can't even recall if that ex-cop shit even factored into the story at all. Nothing about the writing in this game stuck with me. It was well presented and decently written with really tight and precise dialogue, but it all felt so cold and sterile. Even all the villain confrontations lacked anything with flair or personality. They mostly felt like having the same conversation with the same smug asshole who's either assured in his self-righteousness or as vaguely threatening as you drag them off the jail off screen, right down to the main villain. It's assumed all of your choices have some sort of consequence and affects the main story, but all the choices I made in my one and only playthrough were the only choices that felt like the right choices to make, and the brief epilogue didn't contradict that feeling either. Anything else felt like an obvious bad ending or a middling ending, and to be blunt, I'm not willing to subject myself to this game more than once as it currently is to find out. The writing of this game is just fundamentally fine. It serves its purpose but will leave your mind the second you finish this game. Nothing about it is remarkable or provocative. It's a perfectly serviceable conspiracy plotline that glues the gameplay together. I do wish I could say more about the effort that went into this writing, but I just don't have anything to say. The focus in the writing feels like it was there to tie this elaborate conspiracy, which, while solid, is nothing we haven't seen before. Nor is it anything with a message to really ponder over besides corporations bad, and any one of us could have told you that. Stories that stick with people aren't going to stick because of the actual plot. It sticks because of the characters. We have to care about the characters whose journeys we're following. There needs to be more to their personalities and interactions that gives us more to actually make us root for them. When everything just feels clean and narrow, it may cause things to move at a brisk narrative pace, but it won't stick at any point on the way down. Basically what I'm saying is this game just needs a little more humanity. More scenes of Joe, Frank, and Spider interacting with one another in actual human ways. But as is, this game's writing is just as cold as my love life. Ooh, self-burn. Those are rare. This junction is a game brimming with potential. Ape Tribe Games really did put in the work to create a rock-solid foundation for a truly great stealth action game, and you really do see that effort on full display. With the right tweaks, it could still be that game you just want to jump back into again and again for fun. Tweaks in its checkpoint system to make it more than a single-use resource. More accessible combat that doesn't see you insta-kill the instant you get caught in a room with more than two guards. And a little more variety in the skills and a goddamn New Game Plus mode that doesn't see you throw away all the XP and upgrade kits you've cultivated all game long. The foundation is there for a truly unique gem of a stealth action game with actual RPG elements. But as it currently stands, Disjunction's potential and moments of truly gratifying gameplay are outweighed by the sheer volume of frustrating design choices that render the game often feeling unfair, cheap, and downright infuriating. I was glad I stuck with it and saw this game through to the end, but unless it sees any kind of serious changes in its design in the future, this is not a game I have any interest in replaying anytime soon. And so my final rating for this junction is a 6 out of 10. There is a damn good game just below the surface, and that good is enough to make me eager to see what Ape Tribe Games comes up with next. Because if they can make a game like this with just three bodies at the helm, then that is some damn serious talent. Whether this junction is ultimately worth your time or not depends entirely on you. Namely, for someone who can handle some seriously hardcore difficulty without any real reward incentive beyond progressing to the next level. If it seems like something you'd be into, check it out. It's not even 20 bucks. How do you feel about insanely difficult video games? Is a challenge something you crave or something that turns you off? If you played Disjunction or games like it, whatever your thoughts, let me know in the comments. Maybe consider subscribing or accepting Jesus H. Backchrist into your life. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I couldn't think of any jokes to close this video on, so here's progressive YouTube giant David Pakman using my catchphrase on his program. What actual honest to bat Christ good.